Welcome to the open forum for Gabrielle Lopez. Many of you know Gabrielle. We appreciate you coming today. Uh, Gabrielle has an undergraduate degree from the University of Colorado, a PhD from the University of Washington, and then he did a postdoc at Harvard before he came to UNM and uh, spent much of his academic career at UNM starting, uh, well, in the chemical engineering department and starting the biomedical engineering center and the biomedical graduate program. He has been at Duke the last five years, and he uh, is the founding director of the Research Triangle MRSEC, and we're going to let him speak to you. And I want to remind you that you can go to the vprsearch.unm.edu website to fill out an evaluation. Gabrielle. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that nice introduction, uh, Julie. Um, uh, it's a real pleasure to be here, and it's uh, an honor to uh, have a chance to interview for this uh, important position at UNM. Um, the, the position uh, combines several passions uh, of, of my passions, uh, including research, uh, academic life, uh, collaboration, and also um, advancing UNM in the state of New Mexico. So um, it's, it's a real honor for me to be here. Um, I want to start by telling you a little bit about myself and um, my background that I think uh, is not in the CV that you won't, you won't get from the CV, but I think that makes me, uh, I, I think it's, it's stuff that I think uh, makes me sort of, uh, particularly, I think, uh, gives me particular uh, qualifications for this job. Um, and before I start that, I'd like to uh, get a sense for uh, who all of you are. So how many people in here are staff? I think the staff is going to win. Okay. Uh, how many are faculty? Okay. How many are administrators? Okay. Are there any students? Great. Okay. Are there any other uh, community members? Steve. Okay. Um, anybody else? Okay. Fantastic. Well, thank you all for uh, coming out uh, here today. So, I. Um, I, I was born and raised in uh, northern New Mexico in a s small town of Penasco. Uh, how many people know where Penasco is? Okay, that's good. Most people. Maybe not everybody. For those, for if there's anybody who doesn't know where Penasco is, uh, Penasco is on the high road to Taos, and it's uh, a uh, predominantly Hispanic um, village, um, but it's, it's in the middle of the uh, Picuris Reservation. So I grew up in a, in a fairly traditional agricultural setting, but it was a very diverse setting. So usually when you think about agricultural um, small towns, you don't necessarily think of them as very diverse, but Pinasco is actually quite diverse. And um, as I learned um, in reading uh, Jose Rivera's books, you know, the, these, these cultures have a, a tradition of working well with one another. Uh, w w people have to work well one, with one another in order to survive. And I think this is one of the things that, um, that made me particularly successful when it came to undertaking um, uh, research projects where there was a lot of collaborators from different, different, um, different areas. Um, and so um, some more background on myself. Uh, my parents were teachers. Uh, my father was a World War II vet who benefited tremendously, like uh, many others in my uh, community, from the GI Bill. And he was one of the pioneers in public education in our community. Uh, my oldest sister is an alumna of the UNM School of Medicine. And uh, she worked as a family doc for many years um, in northern New Mexico. And uh, she currently serves as, on the admissions committee for the, for the UNM uh, Med School. My oldest brother is also alumnus of the um, UNM School of Medicine, and he's currently uh, the Vice President for Research for the uh, Puget Sound Blood Center. Um, my other brother was the Interstate Stream Commissioner for New Mexico under the, under the past two uh, governors, and um, he's recently appointed uh, by President Obama to be Commissioner for the U.S. Um, Bureau of Reclamation. So my family has a long history of service to New Mexico. So of, of, of this family, I was the runt of the litter, um, <laughs> um, but I still managed to have a, a nice uh, family of my own. 
Um, uh, my wife, Kauri, uh, is an educator. Uh, when we lived here in Albuquerque, she worked for the Albuquerque Public Schools and taught at Longfellow Elementary. She now runs a nonprofit that is focused on um, providing opportunities for minorities in model United Nations programs. I have two kids. My daughter, Chana, is a UNM student um, in chemical engineering, and my son, Jose, is a senior in high school, and he's been accepted uh, for, to, to UNM for the fall. Um, so um, I, I have uh, you know, not only my own personal relationship with UNM, but a substantial familial relationship with UNM as well. Um, some history, I was uh, initially recruited to UNM by Professor Doug Smith, who was then the director of the Center for Microengineered uh, Ceramics. This was a NSF Industry University Cooperative Research Center and the precursor to the current Center for Microengineered Ceramics. This was in 1993 that I joined the faculties of chemical engineering and chemistry at UNM. And I rose steadily through the faculty ranks, setting up a lab, teaching a variety of courses, and being quite successful in multi-interdisciplinary um, uh, or multidisciplinary research initiatives. My first federal grant was the following year from the National Science Foundation, and it included six faculty collaborators from several departments. These included John Wood from the Mechanical Engineering, David Keller from Chemistry, and Steve Stricker from Biology. I'm sorry, uh, not Steve Stricker, Tim Ross from, Chem from Civil Engineering. Um, this, the, the grant was followed by many other uh, collaborative projects. Uh, which formed the basis of many long-term uh, research collaborations. These included a multidisciplinary, uh, multi-institutional MURI grant from the Office of Naval Research, which I led as an assistant professor, and which initiated my long-term collaborations with Steve Bruick at CHTM and Larry Sklar at the UNM Cancer Center. The MURI grant was focused on developing fundamental advances in biosensor technologies, and it led to several other multi-investigative grant investigative grants from NSF and NIH. Uh, these included uh, NIH Bioengineering Research Partnership, which was a major grant that was led by Larry Sklar and included several engineering uh, faculty, including Andrea Mamoli. Uh, so there was, there was a number of these types of multi-investigator uh, research projects, but there were also um, several uh, training grants that I was involved in. These included an NSF IGERT, uh, which was entitled Cross-Disciplinary Optics Research and Education. Uh, it had a significant biosensing component as well, and faculty from across the campus. My co-PIs on that grant were Wolfgang Rudolph and Mansoor Sheikh Bahai uh, from physics, and Steve Stricker from biology. And so, um, my point in telling you all of this is that it provides some background um, that led up in 2005 um, in, in uh, UNM recognizing my collaborative activity and recruiting me uh, to to lead a new interdisciplinary initiative. So that year, the uh, Dean of the School of Engineering, uh, Joe Checky, and, uh, and the then vi Vice President for Research asked me to uh, lead the effort for the Center for Biomedical Engineering. And the goals of the center were twofold. Basically, uh, what the vision was to capitalize on the significant potential for uh, synergy between main campus researchers and the health science center researchers. Another goal was to establish within the state of New Mexico for the first time uh, a, a real academic program in the area of biomedical engineering, uh, which at the time was uh, identified by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics as the top career growth area in the U.S. So um, I was involved with others and uh, lobbying the legislature uh, to get funding for this program. And soon we had a center that uh, had a diverse cadre of researchers that spanned the cultures of engineering, science, and medicine. And new facilities, uh, the Centennial Engineering uh, Center, uh, where we were all working on collaborative grants. We also set up a new graduate program in biomedical engineering. Uh, this was the first and only such program in the state. Um, one of the first collaborative grants uh, to the center was the NSF Partnership for Research and Education in Materials, which involved collaborations between Harvard, the Southwestern Indian Polytechnic Institute, and the APS. This multi-institutional multi project was run by me, uh, Heather Canavan, Elizabeth Dirk, Julia Fulgem, and Demeter Petsev. Uh, this this ex experience with this particular grant uh, from the NSF Division of Materials Research 
was uh, very important uh, to me personally because it put me in an excellent position to apply for an NSF Materials Research Center when I went to Duke. Um, Duke had been trying for many years to land one of these centers. Um, it had been unsuccessful. So as soon as I arrived in North Carolina, I began working on this center proposal. And within just um, about 15 months of being there, uh, we knew that um, we, had we, we would be successful and we would be one of only three new uh, such um, MERSECs that had been awarded that year. Uh, running this uh, research triangle, MERSEC, has been really challenging for me, but it's given me a great uh, experience working with a very diverse faculty and, and on research-focused and initiatives. The center has over 70 faculty and students uh, from 10 departments across four universities. So those of you who follow college basketball will know that there's a real bitter rivalry between the between the re research triangle universities, right? These, these folks are natural enemies. Um, the, the, the animosity is, is uh, it's well-mannered, but it is real, and it does take some effort to overcome when you're trying to get people to work together. And I think that a secret to success towards doing this is, um, and to building good research teams in general, is to, en to enable people to contribute their, their expertise freely. Uh, pre pre productive researchers generally are always very enthusiastic about sharing their work, uh, and they take great, pr great pride in their work, and it's often not very difficult to, to get them to work together, provided that you have patience and let people uh, speak about their work, and also you promote fairness within the interactions within the, uh, within the group. So this is what I wanted to say to summarize my background and things that are not on my CV, but I think have some bearing on, uh, potentially on the job uh, here of, of VPR at UNM. Uh, I apologize for not naming everyone that I've worked with uh, throughout all of my 16 plus years at UNM, especially of those of you who, who came um, this afternoon. Uh, but I, I wanted to just mention some people that are across, uh, just that have been uh, uh, from across the various uh, departments at UNM so that you get some idea that I, do work across disciplinary boundaries quite well. Now, I realize that there's lots, that I have lots to learn about the entire spectrum of academic disciplines at the university that rely on the VPR office for uh, service related to, to research and scholarly activities. This is one of the things that excites me about this job in, and, and, the, and the prospect of, of uh, getting a chance to learn about more about the university as a whole. Uh, my view of the UNM VPR's office from the outside is that it's running pretty well right now. They have fantastic staff and a website that clearly presents their mission to advance innovation and discovery at UNM. The office ha offers seamless service to researchers in proposal preparation, submission, and project execution. The office is enabling research by maintaining both physical infrastructure and human resource infrastructure, uh, such as the IRB process. And it is also enabling research translation by supporting uh, the STC. The current VPR uh, seems to run a, an incredibly transparent operation and seems to consult heavily with other uh, leaders on the faculty and research. Uh, I think there's substantial uh, room for growth, however. Uh, research expenditures have been fairly flat over the last few years. And even though some of this might be attributed to the, um, to the sort of downturn in funding rates nationally, UNM is still um, lagging a bit behind peer institutions and in research. So I think uh, we must uh, find ways to enhance the success of the research endeavor. I think this can be done through a critical analysis of strengths and weaknesses and through the development of creative new ways to maximize impact both through interdisciplinary collaboration and through administrative collaboration. Uh, another important task will be to make sure that the importance of university research and scholarly activity is well recognized uh, throughout the state. Um, my view of a successful v VPR is one who enables not only faculty research but also catalyzes the faculty research, uh, both through internal mechanisms and through external mechanisms. So internally, the VPR should be the principal convener of research initiatives. I found the provost's uh, weekly communique last week uh, particularly interesting in this uh, respect. It referred to an article that used the metaphor as of academic research, 
researchers as brick makers who too often do not venture away from their academic silos. To extend this analogy, um, I think it's important to understand that we don't only need brick makers, we also need people who make windows and floors and roofs if we're going to make lasting edifices. So uh, in other words, basically, I think uh, both as researchers and administrators, we have to work across disciplinary uh, boundaries and understand that we are all in this together. And we, in order to make the most uh, out of the resources that we have, we should do our best to make things as efficient as possible. Um, the, v the VPR should also be the chief advocate for research in the world external to UNM. This includes promoting UNM's strength to funding agencies, to foundations and industries, um, but also champion championing the importance of research to external UNM stakeholders, such as the regents, uh, the local, state, and federal governments, uh, and local industries, as well as our potential research partners um, here that we are so fortunate to have in the national laboratories. So I'd like to conclude my formal remarks here and just reiterate my thesis. You know, I know UNM and its research mission intimately. I have proven that I can work successfully across, with faculty across uh, many dis departments at UNM, and I'm confident that I can hit the ground running and compelling the institution to build its research productivity and impact. Uh, these are the main reasons why I feel I'm particularly well qualified to be VPR of this institution. Uh, I thank you for your time, and I would be happy to take any questions that you have. We simply ask that as you have questions that you uh, introduce yourself and please talk into the mic so that the tape will pick you up. doesn't need to pick me up. Thank you so much for your uh, introductory remarks and being interested in the position. I'm Barbara McCready. I'm faculty in the psychology department and the director of CASA. Oh. Um, sorry, I'm, I know it's not on. I'm just, my voice doesn't carry very well. <coughs> you all know, you know who I am, though. Okay. Very nice to meet you, Barbara. This is the sub. <laughs> <laughs> the sub needs to buy a new mic. You need a new mic, right? I don't think it's going to go on. Right. Maybe project. I'll just be, I'll be loud then. Um, as a psychologist and a and, and, uh, person who heads a, a human research center, I'm really interested in your thoughts about some of the challenges for uh, human subjects research and for IRBs uh, at universities these days. Thank you. Um, Sure, uh, th thank you. Um, so, you know, I have to admit that I'm not intimately familiar with uh, a lot of the IRB process. I've been involved with it a little bit uh, um, in some of our uh, own educational and medical research. Uh, for example, right now uh, we're developing um, a new type of catheter and it's going to be um, tested in patients at Duke Hospital. Um, so, um, the IRB part of Part of that um, um, initiative is being held, handled by an MD who I'm working with. So I haven't had a lot of, um, of uh, uh, personal experience, and I, I'll admit that freely. Um, I certainly feel that it is an important function of the office of uh, the VPR. Um, when I was here before, um, uh, this, this function was not in the VPR, it was at the medical school. So it's been, it's been brought to the main campus and I think um, that should be a good thing, especially for folks like yourself um, who, who, um, who do more psychology uh, type of research. Um, uh, um, I think that's what you do, right? Yeah. Um, so um, so I, I think this, you know, having, having a dedicated IRB for main campus is, is is, is in principle a good thing. Uh, I trust that it's working well because it seems that uh, uh, I've heard uh, no, no complaints from anybody um, uh, so far. Um, but uh, that, that, you know, um, uh, so uh, that might be part of the recruiting process, I don't know. Uh, um, uh, but I, I believe it, it's a very important thing and especially for, um, not only in my area where I, I do translational work um, that results uh, in medical devices, 
but also uh, very important for people doing um, social studies uh, work where um, where there is um, there has to be some analysis of humans and human behavior um, and you know I think that um, especially um, the setting in which UNM find it, finds itself, where it has this very unique culture uh, and, and very diverse population, uh, a very old population for the United States, the oldest, right, in principle. Um, uh, I think th this is something that the, that, um, the university should foster, is to take advantage of this of this uh, of, of, of of its place in, in the setting and and make the most of it and if and if that means that um, it needs to invest in uh, the IRB process then it should um, um, it's um, you know arts and science uh, brings in um, probably the biggest chunk of F and A dollars into the U university or this part of the university um, and it you know, there are people in arts and science who benefit from this. From this uh, service, uh, and and um, it should be streamlined as much as, as possible, but yet uh, achieve its goals. So. I'm not asking a question; I'm just turning this on. There you go. Hello, I have a question. Uh, I'm Heather Canavan from the School of Engineering, and my question is for you. I've worked with you before on research as well as education, and I've always looked up to you as a researcher, and I'm interested in, are you thinking of being able to come back to UNM and have a research lab, or are you going to sort of slow that down and ramp up on your administrative service? Um, sure, uh, thanks, Heather. Um, yeah, I, I, I think, um, um, I, I, I don't want to give up research completely. I mean, it's my passion, one of my passions, as I said, and I think that um, it allows me to uh, bring a certain um, credibility and um, you know, boots on the ground type of experience. I, I think it's quite important. Um, um, I think it's important um, that that administrators be able to really understand the problems that the faculty are facing with regards to getting things done, and that's one way to do it, right? Um, certainly, I don't anticipate uh, having the size of research group that I have now. Right now, there's about uh, 20 uh, graduate students and uh, uh, postdocs in my laboratory, um, and so uh, I don't anticipate having that level of, of, of research activity. I, 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 uh, you know, I, even if I wanted to, I don't think I could. I could pull that off. I, I think uh, if if I do come here, I will dedicate myself uh, to the mission of of uh, the vice president for research. Um, and as I alluded to before, uh, part of that is going to have to be learning about um, the various uh, parts of uh, the university that I am not real familiar with right now, and that's clearly going to take some effort. Um, and so, this is something that I, I believe uh, will satisfy my, my curiosity. Um, you know, part of the reason that I have 20 people in my lab right now is because I like learning new stuff, right? Um, but there's, there's other ways to learn new stuff. Um, and so um, um, I think that I, I will certainly dedicate myself to be VPR, but I, I think it's probably a good thing uh, for me to not give up research entirely. And so we'll, we'll figure out how to do that. I have a question. I can shout it from here. You have to go to the, or I, I will not answer okay, you, Christo. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm uh, Christos, Christo Durham, the Associate Dean for Research for the School of Engineering. Sometimes I forget School of Engineering. So I graduated from North Carolina State and I never learned how to like Duke yet. So it's a common affliction. Yeah. So my question is, I do know though that Duke has an amazing medical school. Do you think you can bring some of the practices uh, that Duke has in terms of collaboration between the medical school and the School of Engineering, for example, Arts and Sciences, to us? What would that be? 
Um, yeah, I, I, so the answer is I, I certainly hope so. And I, um, um, you know, I've had a long history of collaboration with the medical school here even before I left. Um, and there's some very good people here. I think it's a very good medical school in its own right here uh, at UNM. And, um, you know, uh, as far as uh, best practices, um, you know, basically it comes down to person-to-person -person, uh, research collaboration. There are, of course, um, um, sort of institutional level um, um, programs that in principle can be built. Uh, for example, um, for engineering, um, uh, engineers are, are natural players in the translational um, uh, mission, um, and there is a, a, a CTSC uh, here in the medical school, and so uh, I would I would hope that the um, that there could be some role for engineers in, in clinical translation here at UNM, and I don't know to what extent that is occurring right now, but it certainly could be a natural thing. Um, so I you know I think. Um, I, I know plenty of the of the players uh, in the med school, and I have good relationships with them. And I and I do think that um, we we can build on the relationships that 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 we that we have established when I was here before, and to some extent have carried on even while I've been at Duke. Um, uh, I still uh, have collaborated with people here, uh, as even though I was at Duke in the medical school. Lopez, I'm Joe Checky, and Dean of the School of Engineering. Um, Duke is admittedly a bit of a different institution than UNM, um, but in some ways probably not so different. I think my own experience suggests that people magnify the, the differences, but there must have been some things. What are, what are the main things that you saw there that you think were, were uh, good lessons to, to uh, implement here? What, you, you know, what, over the last five and a half years, what, what what have you learned about there that you might bring back as, a, as somebody to emulate? Yeah. So, um, you know, I think um, one thing that Duke does really well that um, I think UNM does to a certain extent, um, but um, probably could be a little bit more deliberate, is in um, organizing uh, campus-wide uh, discussions about particular topics um, that are of contemporary interest. Um, you know, they're, they're, you know, I know that UNM has the, um, the, the regent's lectureship, right, um, or the regent's, regents professor, and generally that's an internal uh, type of uh, forum. Um, but we could also, uh, UNM could also focus on bringing people from outside that would be used as a focal point in order to um, have a conversation of a, about a particular area that it wants to, in principle, invest in or move into in some, in some way. Um, so... Um, I think that's uh, one thing that can be done that, um, that is not that expensive, right? Um, you know, some people, uh, if you want to bring a real big name to campus, uh, there's, there's two ways to do it, right? Um, you can give them a lot of money or you can give them a degree. Um, and so uh, you'll be surprised what people will do for an honorary degree. Um, and and uh, so if you can you can have um, have people come, and 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 they will attract a, a, a lot of a lot of people. Um, they will say provocative things, and uh, they will um, you know you can build around that a conversation and have and you make a day of it basically um, um, to to focus on a particular topic. And that's one thing I think that we can do in research that is not you know it's it's. Um, it doesn't require a lot of resources, but it can be it can be done. Um, there there are other examples, um, and um, yeah, I I think um, to sort of go back to to your question, you know, what are things that um, that that are similar about uh, Duke and, and and UNM? I you know I think um, they both have very good um, materials presence. 
um, very good biomaterials present, very good uh, medical schools. And so I think, uh, you know, th th that was one of the things that was, uh, you know, sort of similar to me, right? Uh, it was, it was, it was, it was um, uh, familiar when I went there. Um, and, you know, they have good photonics uh, people out there. Um, so, so there, there are some commonalities. And um, last thing I'd like to say is that, you know, um, uh, I think it's true that, that UNM does some things better than Duke, and, and, and I really miss um, some of the things that UNM does better than Duke. Um, um, and uh, I just want to point that out, okay? Um, uh, one of the things that I think it does better than Duke is, is, um, is licensing and ventures. Um, I, I miss STC. Um, and um, I think this is, um, it's, 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 uh, it's, a, it's a real uh, benefit to have an organization that's that, like STC that's proactive. I've been a little bit frustrated at Duke, and it's one of the reasons that uh, I applied for this job. I have to say it's the first time in my life that I've seen Plamen Atanasov in a room. <laughs> so quiet. <laughs> May, uh, now I, I'm, I, I, I tickled the dough. I, 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 I tickled the dough. I'll ask a question in your, in your, uh, in your bush, you know, uh, Jose. So, um, in coming back to UNM, you mentioned probably three or four times that um, you, 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 you would need to learn about the other parts of, this, of the university that you were not exposed to as an engineering professor. Um, from those parts, of course, the liberal arts, the humanities are probably, and the, and the fine arts are probably the furthest away from our way of life. Um, would you have something to guide you in that direction? Do you have any passion? Do you have any attitude towards those parts of UNM that are not engineering, so to speak? Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I guess, uh, yes, the, an the answer is yes. You know, I, um, um, I mentioned um, one of the books that Jose wrote, uh, Jose Rivera wrote uh, early on in my, in my presentation. It was before you, you, you came in, you know, late as usual. <laughs> uh, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, being from New Mexico, uh, I, I do have um, uh, an interest in, in the history of New Mexico and um, the culture of New Mexico, the unique, very unique culture of New Mexico, and um, trying to understand uh, how, um, how UNM can help potentially with its mission uh, of education and also uh, research and, and economic development within the context of that culture of New Mexico. And so um, uh, last year I, uh, was, um, I was fortunate enough to attend a, a lecture by Jose uh, in, in northern New Mexico in, in which he talked at length about some of the thesis that he's developed, he's, he's developed over the years. And um, so um, I didn't know he was going to be here, right? I didn't know he, he was going to be here today. Uh, but, um, um, you know, I, I do see, um, I do see uh, things through a little bit different uh, lens right now, and it has to do with the fact that I'm from here. I care about the people and the state, and I think that one of the keys um, in, you know, in, for the university that's not engineering, that's not science, but that's really social science is, is, is doing research and scholarly activity with regards to the culture. And I think that can have a profound impact on uh, the economic situation for our state. Um, I, I, I have to show you this. Uh, it was given to me this morning. You, sh you guys should all have this. I'm sure some of you have seen it, but you see this? <laughs> This is, this is a wonderful thing. This is, this is the, uh, the flow of money, the flow, the flow of, of, of f and a, right? This is the f and a that's generated, and this is where it flows to. So this is uh, for the, for the uh, chemical engineers, right? This is, this is the, 
the money balance, right? Uh, and um, but but for Jose, this is a, this is an acequia system, right? This this, this is yeah yeah this is you know this is the watershed, and these are the acequias, right? So our job is to make it rain, and uh, and and to fill to fill these these coffers with 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 rainwater, uh, so that we can all do uh, fun things uh, with the, with with the, with the money on the other side. So. Um, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm really impressed with this thing. <laughs> um, it, it's incredible, um, uh, the, the amount of, um, uh, the accessibility of, of, of how research, you know, that there is now with for people to understand how research works at this in, in, institution. I think uh, Mike and his, and his office uh, deserve a lot of credit for bringing um, a huge amount of transparency uh, to how things are, are being done here. Um, so, uh, I hope uh, I answered your question, Plamen. Yes, but I have a uh, oh. question. Oh. <laughs> 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 of course, I'm just joking. Hi, I'm David Scott, Associate Dean for Research in the College of Education. I want to follow up on with Plamen's question. It was kind of a concrete um, example, I guess, in terms of your working with colleges outside of directly science um, and mathematics and engineering. But one of the things that, that we are in the process of doing right now is certainly trying to um, improve, enhance um, our math and science education for K through 12 educators in this state. And doing so um, certainly means a lot of better understanding of the variables specifically in New Mexico that <coughs> contribute to student performance and student outcomes. So certainly we have both an opportunity and I think a challenge right now to, uh, in an interdisciplinary way, look at the research that we're doing in that area and how we might also be able to interface with others in arts and sciences engineering to create the best and most innovative K through 12 math and science education that we can. So I would just be interested in hearing your thoughts on how you might um, interact in a way to help us do that. So. Well, I, I think it's, it's, it sounds like a fantastic um, uh, endeavor that, uh, that, that you are embarking on, and I, I wish you the best of luck on that. I, if, if, I, you know, if I am fortunate enough to uh, get this position, um, I would be keenly interested in, in this project. You know, I, I think this has bearing on everything in the university, right? I mean, if, if, you, if you can help address some of the issues with the, sec with the primary and secondary school system, we're all going to benefit as, as a university. Um, we're going to get better prepared students. Uh, they're going to uh, be more creative. We're going to be able to help them, uh, help us to do uh, better research. And absolutely, I agree that um, this is not necessarily only within the purview of the School of Education. Uh, this. Uh, you know, if, if you know, certainly you you can involve people that have skills outside of uh, education of, um, in, in various aspects of your research and you know, um, statistics and whatnot. But also, I think, um, in you know, engaging uh, people uh, in professions um, that these that these youngsters aspire to 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 be involved in in developing of these programs is really important, right? Um, uh, the students, uh, they have dreams and, and they, they, need, uh, they need to be able to, to connect to real people, right, that, that uh, show them that uh, it's, it's not just some fantasy, right, to, to, to be a doctor, to be an engineer, or um, to be an artist. Um, I think that um, this, is, uh, this is something that you know, clearly could involve the entire spectrum of the, of the university. Um, how much of it would actually play into the, the research uh, that you're doing, um, I'm not real clear on. I would have, we'd have to have a longer discussion about it, but I certainly think it's a very, very important endeavor. And um, I think it deserves the utmost of support from the university because that's the, the university's lifeblood. Go ahead. 
questions too. Sure. <laughs> Um, actually, I, have a, I do have a second question. Um, one of the things I think is really important for the VPR is to be able to um, translate what a research university is to the legislature. And, you know, clearly you're in a unique position to be able to do that because you, you have a deep understanding of New Mexico and the culture and, and the perspectives that people have. So I'm curious to know some of the ways you might um, essentially sell the research university to the legislators to have us get more support, um, support for research, special projects, and things like that. What are some of the unique <coughs> things that you think you could say or, or bring to that part of the job? Sure. Um, so, you know, I think that, um, you know, the, the, the go-to answer there is, you know, always a sort of economic development, right? We, we need to foster research um, because creative researchers uh, are, are the engines of, of uh, innovation um, that are going to lead to, uh, to uh, patents, inventions, startups. I think that, that is something that um, is clear, and uh, I think that's, that's, that's already being sold, right? Um, um, Pretty well, I think. I, you know, I think that uh, um, for, for the first time that I can remember, um, UNM is sort of on the map uh, within the state as being uh, a place where uh, where uh, there is a significant um, translational activity occurring. So that 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 is important. And it's 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 maybe primary, um, but it's certainly not the only thing. Um, the other, the other thing that um, it's important to try to make um, the, the powers that be understand, or at least remind them, they probably understand this already, but they, they, I think they need reminding uh, as often as possible, is that um, some of the best jobs in the state are research jobs. And you, you the only way that you be can become trained to be a researcher is to do research. And so they, they should be funding research as part of the educational endeavor because the biggest employers are research institutions. And so I think that's something that is, is obvious, but yet uh, a lot of times it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, get, get relayed. Um, and so I think that's another, another thing. And, and, and it's, it's, I should, I should, I, I feel strongly, as, and I think I said this, you know, sort of alluded to it before, uh, is, is that, you know, the, the entire range of scholarly activities, not just necessarily science and engineering, um, but the entire range of, uh, of scholar, scholarly activity in the social studies and, and uh, the humanities and the arts are relevant to a lot of times to our culture and 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 our uh, the people our stakeholders right I mean the people that are paying the taxes that go to run uh, the university um, the, a lot of them are not working at these big scientific institutions they're they're uh, doing other things you know they they're uh, they're either educators or they're artists or uh, you know doing other things. Uh, tourism, let's say, that have direct bearing on the sorts of things that, that we study at the university. So I think um, it's, it's important that um, the legislature un understands that um, we don't do things necessarily in isolation. Uh, I think that that's the general perception is that, oh, these people are out there gazing at their navel. Right? Um, uh, it's, not, it's not the case. Um, uh, there's, there's people at the university that are doing things that are of direct relevance to the community around them, and I think that needs to be portrayed. That was the question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Can you beat Van Romero? <laughs> uh, I remember Van remember Romero when he was quite buff. He was, he, was, he, was, he was really built. Join me in thanking Gabriel Lopez. Thank you. Thank you all very much.
since I don't think I was picked up at the beginning, let me just remind you that you can evaluate all of the candidates at vprsearch.unm.edu. Thanks.